Hi, I'm Dallas Dickinson, Director of Production on Star Wars The Old Republic, the new story-driven MMO from Bioware and LucasArts. Today, I'm going to walk you through the experience of playing the Tural 5 Flashpoint. In the game, this is a scenario you would undertake at level 32 or so, after many hours of advancing your character through your personal storyline. Like other Flashpoints in the Old Republic, Tural 5 is designed for four players, and whether you're playing with your friends or a group you just met on the game, teamwork is critical if you want to succeed. Before you get to the action, though, you've got to learn what this is all about by talking with Master Oteg, a revered Jedi Master who needs a strike team to carry out an important and dangerous mission. Welcome, friends. You're even more impressive in person. Forgive me for not shaking hands, but I forgot my hover seat today. <laughs> Before we begin, I'll ask that you keep an open mind to what you're about to hear. The source of my information is, um, unconventional. You should see the sources I usually rely on. They redefine disreputable. Despite its unusual nature, my source is of the highest integrity. I will share with all of you... The conversation with Master Oteg is a multiplayer conversation. We're watching it from the trooper's perspective. And as you can see, after he selects his response in the conversation, he rolls a random number between 1 and 100. The same thing happens for the other players, and the player with the highest roll wins. In this case, the Jedi Knight. Follow Oteg's lead. This is important. It seems that Master Oteg has somehow enabled the entire group, even the non-Force users, to speak with a Force ghost. She is here, a Jedi without physical form. Her body is long dead, but her wisdom, her essence, lives on. The darkness will consume all it touches. The stars will burn black, ashes raining on lifeless worlds. Everything ends. The prisoner holds the darkness at bay, lost inside it for 300 years. His strength will fail. Then he will become the darkness. This prisoner has been fighting the Empire for centuries. How is he still alive? The bond weakens, my friend. I'll take things from here. She's told me many things. Revealed the existence of an Imperial prison in the constantly shifting Maelstrom Nebula, and a way to get there. The only way to navigate the Maelstrom is using a Gree computer hidden at an Imperial fortress. We need that computer to free the Jedi prisoner. That's what I do best. The fortress we're invading is on the planet Taral V. Enemy territory, protected by Imperial warships. Too many to fight. But we have a captured Imperial shuttle that can sneak past the sentries. It's waiting for you in the hangar. You can fill me in on the rest while we travel. There's no time to waste. Our fleet will hide at the system's edge so I can monitor your mission and guide you. If something goes wrong, we'll come running. Go to the shuttle, my friends. May the Force be with you. All right, the team's ready for action, heading for the shuttle that will take them to the planet's surface. The shuttle sequence is one of our cinematic cutscenes. You're going to see we have cutscenes for departing from and arriving to most, if not all, of the planets in the game. Here comes the shuttle now, landing in a remote location on Taral 5. From here, the players are going to have to proceed on foot. Well done. You've successfully infiltrated Taral 5. The Imperials think you're just another shuttle bringing supplies. So here you see the players prepping themselves or buffing up before going into battle. We're watching this from the perspective of the Jedi Sage, a consular advanced class. Here they go. Lightning strikes the ground here and starts a fire, and one of Grand Moff Kilrin's shuttles is dropping off troops in the distance. 
Now we shift to the smuggler's perspective. He's a scoundrel advanced class, and he's set up to be the healer. He's in cover, which gives him a defensive bonus, and he's tossing out the heals. Those green circles you see are signs to the smuggler that his cover bonuses apply. You can see the trooper got the skin player's attention. The knight is distracting the lesser jungle beast, and the team's tactics are perfect here. So we're watching from the Jedi Knight's perspective now. He's a guardian with a single saber, but he is a major damage dealer in this group. Whoa, check that out! The shuttle got hit by lightning, then veered off, hit the watchtower, and brought the tower down. That blue square on the knight is actually one of the enemies targeting him. You see the smuggler's healing probe coming in to give the knight a slow release med pack. Okay, so back to the perspective of our trooper. He's a vanguard, which means he gets access to the heaviest armors in the game, and a reactive shield that increases his threat towards enemies. So now the team is headed over to destroy this Imperial research station. That's actually part of a bonus mission inside the flashpoint. Oh, and they're ambushed by jungle crawlers. The trooper needs to make sure they don't swarm the healer. Oh, and the knight detonates the research terminal. This explosion finished off the jungle crawlers, essentially giving the team some free experience. Nicely done. Alright, the team's back on the path now. We're still in the Jedi Sage's perspective. Up here, Imperial soldiers are battling a Jagoran River Lurker. The River Lurker is the real danger here, so the Sage targets him and lets loose some of her telekinetic abilities. Oops, now she's got his attention, and he's coming after her. Those robes aren't exactly heavy armor, so this could get ugly. We change perspective over to the Jedi Knight, who's taking down the last of the Imperials here, a commando. The Knight's now with everyone else on the River Lurker. He powers up and lands a hit hard enough to get the beast's attention. And the River Lurker is down. The trooper's got the vine cat's attention, but the jungle crawler is on the smuggler. That's no good. Somebody better help the healer. There we go. All good. Next up, Imperials. The knight starts things by detonating a barrel of explosive material and then wading in. The trooper tosses a sticky grenade, so you can see the Imperial desperately trying to get it off. And that takes both of them down. Okay, this is our first mini-boss. The smuggler's gonna sneak around here in stealth and tranquilize one of those trained vine cats, taking him out of the fight until the team's ready. The Jedi Sage is setting up a stasis field around the left vine cat, so everyone can concentrate on that mini boss. Now it looks like the trooper tossed a sticky grenade onto the handler. This move packs a punch, but it's also damaged that first vine cat, breaking him out of his stun. Everyone's focusing their fire on the handler, and the trooper's doing a good job of holding the enemy's attention. Great, now that the mini-boss is down, the team can take down the vine cats. The Sage's stasis field lasts a nice long time, but the group's going to want to take that first vine cat down before it fades. Just one vine cat left now. All four players are using their strongest attacks now to bring him down quickly. And the trooper finishes him with a stock strike. Since these enemies were a little tougher, they dropped a commendation, which can be traded for some strong equipment after the mission. Further up the path, the team runs into an Imperial patrol, and it seems they've already got their hands full. As you can see, jungle skin flayers are no fans of the Imperials either. You can sit back and enjoy the show, but if you want the maximum amount of experience, you can rush in and take them all down. Ew. 
Our Jedi Sage has unfortunately drawn aggro, and that's not what she's built for. So let's hope that the team can help her out here. Here comes the trooper. To the rescue. Good job. So that was a destructible barrel. That one was explosive, but you'll find they can inflict a variety of different effects on your enemy. After blowing up this research station, the team is going to move on to the entrance of the Imperial base. That's an elite droid there in the middle, and he's got two troopers backing him up. Back from our troopers' perspective, you can see he's tossing a cryo grenade at one of the other troopers, so we can concentrate on the elite. So here's our first big boss fight. You see Captain Shivanek up there on the deck. But as they attack, he's released his pet, Ripper. Ripper's a little tougher than Captain Shivanek, so luckily the team knew this in advance because they're clever and have probably died several times trying to do this flashpoint. So you can see the Jedi Knight in the background is trying to take care of Captain Shivanek. The Jedi Sage is there with him. The trooper is taking aggro from Ripper and he's partnered pretty much with our smuggler. The smuggler is going to keep him alive as long as he possibly can. And hopefully our two Jedi are going to take care of Captain Shivanek and be able to help out. The smuggler is also responsible for keeping the Jedi alive, so we've got to do a little bit of multitasking here. As you can see, Ripper could take that trooper down very quickly without some help. But luckily, the fight with Captain Shivanek is going very well. Our Jedi Sage is finding giant objects uh, in the ground to fling at Captain Shivanek while the Jedi Knight does damage. Now you can see in the background, the trooper is trying to run Ripper over near to some destructible barrels, like I mentioned before. Unfortunately, he just aggroed an ad. A little bit more trouble for the team. The Jedi Knight and Jedi Consular are going to have to take care of that first. You can see everybody's a little low on health, so it's getting a little touch and go here. But luckily they were paying attention. They've taken care of the ad rather quickly. Well done. And now everyone can concentrate on Ripper. Trooper got a little low on health there, but luckily the smuggler was paying attention. Now we're in a case where we can actually ping-pong aggro. The trooper can take the rage of Ripper for a while, and then the Jedi Knight can attract him. This actually minimizes the amount of damage that Ripper can do. It's a very efficient way of taking on difficult enemies. Now when his trainer, Captain Shivanek, died, he got a buff called Enrage. So he's even tougher than he was at the beginning, making him a challenge for the full group. But as you can see, our crack team is up to the challenge. Before you can enter the enemy's fortress, we have to disable its security grid. Against all odds, the team pulled it off. They defeated Captain Shivanek and Ripper. They'll go on to the next portion of the Flashpoint, 
and if they continue to work together, they may eventually free that Jedi prisoner Master Oteg was so worried about. Even though this is just a portion of the Flashpoint, we hope it's given you a complete feel for what the experience is like. It's fun, it's fast-paced, and it takes smart tactics from each player on the team to pull it off. Tyrell 5 is just one of several Flashpoints in Star Wars The Old Republic. We don't have time to show you all of them. Really, the only way to experience all of this exciting stuff is to play it in the game. So thanks for watching, and we look forward to seeing you there.